Okay, Angie's got it through. We're fighting this the hard way. Because I'm awesome. Yep. That. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you now what I did wrong and forgot to have her do. Is if you look at the layout diagram, it shows what wires go underboard, and it shows the connection from the input jack goes under the board, and the connection from the volume pot goes under the board. And I should have looked at that before I dropped the board in. So. <laughs> but she was able to get it underneath. As soon as we get that one soldered in, then we'll kind of adjust this wire on the other side and clip it and clean it up. So. So she's just trying to get it into pin six, so she can solder it there, and then we'll bring it back. And again, anytime you do a run of a wire near a lot of components that you can't control, shielded wire is your best option, because any noise that leaks into that shielding will go back to ground and away from the signal path. All right. Well, okay. Hopefully that's enough, I guess. Yep, let's give it a whirl. To wrap around it, so you can barely touch it, and we'll just stick them in there. And it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get to. Let me grab these guys, okay. and I'll hold them out of your way. Probably should have been done a long time ago, huh? Oopsie. Yeah, this would have been done normally with the, the turret board in the way. This is also why sometimes maintaining an amplifier like this can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. It's just trying to get into tight spaces with all these components there that you don't want to remove or move. Careful, you're touching a wire. All right, that should be good. Is there a tape or something you can like put these wires down out of the way as you're doing other things? Mm, they wouldn't be in the way if we were done that right. But. All right. So, yep, that looks great. Okay. Now we're gonna- Is there a way to test it? Yes, we can get the continuity tester. Well, actually we can't until we strip this back because mm -hmm. we can't touch the other end. But. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is get our, what we think is gonna be our needed length and cut a little sh uh, away from that and give us a little bit of flexibility and movement. Where's your snips? Mm. So one other thing I'm gonna do here that I did before is I'm gonna strip it a little bit further back because I didn't like the shortness of what we get on these grounding connections. So. Sure, that's better. Now, so what you do with this, this is again the grounding part. We want to get carefully all the shielding and kind of peel it back. And I like to use anything with a little bit of a sharp point because you can kind of get inside and stretch it away until you get it down. I'll go ahead and do this because Angie asked me to do it for it earlier as well. This is a little bit of a kind of a finicky, tedious process, but it's... Uh, doesn't require electrical skill, just requires manual skill that takes a little practice to get used to. All right, I think I've stripped that back. So then what you do is you kind of pull all of these wires around to one side. I twist them together. I've got a couple of little wispies there that I'm gonna get rid of too. That just didn't cut clean on that. All right, so now we'll get a small piece of black wire, connect it and solder it onto that that we will connect also to our grounding bus down here. And where do we? And then this center piece goes into that center hole. Then the blue one will go into the left hole. But we're gonna first, I also need to quickly strip that fine gauge wire, which this guy does really well. Bingo. So now what we wanna do is um, get I want to solder um, on that wire, and then when we're done, we're going to fold this back and put another piece of um, shrink wrap over that before we connect it in. So let's first get that little bit of black wire. Now I actually bought some of the small black wire. Oh, is that the thicker? That's the thicker one. Yeah, we don't need the thick stuff here. All right. I'm going to hand it over to you now, Angie. All right, so I'm attaching it, soldering it to this for the ground. And then where am I attaching it to? So you will connect this to the ground. Mm -hmm. the, under that, we'll just connect to the same grounding wire that we have here. So why could Then this part goes into the center. 
this to the ground and that. You can try there. if you think you've got enough space to do that. Absolutely, I just usually like. But if you think that you can basically connect that there and connect that there at the same time, then go for it. I think I can. Okay, then let's do that. Okay. So for everybody you can see a little bit better now. Let me. All right. All right. So my question is. I've got this, it's gonna go into this. Mm -hmm. okay. It's gonna go in the center, center post. One. Do I wanna go from up above? Because if I go from up down below, I would think coming from away. below is easier. All right. You have the shielding around the wire to protect it from touching or grinding out. So you just want that shielding to go up near the top where you're gonna solder it in. Should I go under the grounding wire as well then? Or should I try and go in between this wire right here and that? Um, I, I don't know. I've not liked where that grounding wire is just because it's so close to those and if those accidentally touch it, they will know, they will ground out and you will have no signal. So if we can kind of move that a little bit, that would be better. So if okay. you can... Do you want me to try and go underneath sure. it? Sure. Let's try and go underneath it over here. Where are those? one more freaking time. You only really need it wound at the base, but I guess it might be blocking it from going through the hole because of the two, I don't know. Yeah, it is. All right. This way. All right, I'm gonna, I might be in the way for a second and I apologize, but. Yes, yeah, so you can them. snip off some of those extra wires that are out of the, out the side. Just once, you just want to get a few of them bent over, solder them in, and then you don't want any of the extras touching down. But those will ground out the signal to the chassis. Actually, so we just solder it first, and then look around and visually clean it up and snip any of the wires that are hanging loose afterwards. You technically only need a single wire, a single strand, but the more strands you have, the better chance it is of longer term stability. Shit's just falling apart. Just, I don't, you could have just folded over and been done. I'm not sure what you're doing now. All you have to do is solder it now. It's through the hole. Okay. I was just trying can... to get them back together a little bit. Okay. That's all. But once you solder it, you can snip, you're going to snip off 90% of that anyway. Okay. I'm just being anal. <laughs> That's what I do. Hole. Say that again. Is that right? I feel this hole? Yes, you want to fill the hole and then just leave it. Don't leave it too long because it can also damage this uh, capacitor or the potentiometer if it gets too heat, heated too long. All right, so we can let that cool. And uh, let's go ahead and strip this wire and get it ready to. Well, I need to do the ground down. still. Yeah, I don't want to jiggle that around until you it's cool. That's why I was saying do this first. So you can get this over and under and bring it up to where you want it to let you think it there and then snip a little past and strip it and then bring it up from the bottom as well for the it goes in that outside edge for the blue wire all right i just like to try and run the wire itself down low somewhere and then bring it up at the last instant up to the actual pot My apologies if I'm in front of the camera again, but we want this to be a thing. Oh, 
Okay. Here we go. So now I'm soldering that, right? Correct. And then you can connect your ground in inside of that as well. So now we can snip both of those off the ends that we don't need anymore and you can get your ground connected. Right. We're going to also need to get this guy connected to the grounding bus as well. That's alright, I'll get that. You go ahead and get your next stuff if I can find it. Yeah. Probably vacuum all this out when we're done yep. too. There's one on the floor somewhere. Okay. So now get your ground wound up, and I think we could also, in theory, run this ground to the same location over there. That's the ground from the main preamp side. Okay. So, measure, cut, and strip, and then ground that one. Should I connect them in the same spot or should I ground this somewhere else? What do you think? They I all mean, just need to be on that grounding bus, whichever, okay. however location you want, whatever location you want is fine. You could, in theory, connect that one into here, but you could also connect it there, wherever you think is easiest. That's just called the grounding bus, and they all ground to one single point that we put to the chassis earlier. So. The grounds on the bus go. Brown? I don't know. Maybe something. strip this for me? That would be great. Without destroying everything around it. You already had it 99% done. Right, well. <laughs> c'est la vie, c'est la vie. C'est la vie, c'est la guerre. C'est la bonne terre. Bon de terre. Alright. still well connected. So this is, to me, honestly, one of the hardest parts of putting amps together is not understanding the component layout or putting the components on. It's all these little, trying to make little connections after the fact. So we're going to take a short break on the filming because we now have this side all completed. We're going to put that back down and out of the way and you don't need to watch us do that. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we're rolling now. I'm going to actually tighten up a little bit. We're going to work on the power and the preamp tubes there. Yep. Actually, this one right here. Yep, this one's already done. That's the power tube. And then when we're done that, we'll go up here to the preamp tube, and then we'll have to connect the negative feedback, and we're all done. So she's going to do the ground right now. And the ground goes between pins 1 and 8 on the schematic, if you look. On the layout, not the schematic, well, that tube, but on the layout and the top right corner, you'll see a black wire between one and eight, and then from eight down to that point, we're connecting in now. That provides the ground for this tube. And, where is it? Move your hand, I can't see, thank you. This 
Is that enough to get through both of them? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I will let you know. Jesus. It's right in my face. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I touched that white wire. Did I burn it? I can't see. I burned it. It's black. Face. It's okay. It looks like it's partially melted through, but that's in a location that it's not going to touch anything else. God anymore. damn it. Yes, Do soldering I... does take time to learn how to avoid stuff. I've burned many of wires on my amps. Luckily, none of them in a way that was a problem, but... There's one and it's dripping a shit ton. Sorry, I'm gonna be in the camera again. I just have to do it this way to be able to see better. And not have it in my f***ing face. Oh shit, I just touched it again. I'm trying not to touch it. I am trying not to touch it. Alright, that's a bit better view. Sorry about that, guys. Big ass hole to try and fill with this shit. Does not. Nope. What? <laughs> You're cursing up a storm, sailor lady. Be Carefully about to touch these wires over here. There you go. You got it. I'm white wire. It's fine. Okay. Next. I have to paint it white so you can't tell. We now need to connect this other resistor into pin 5 and solder it in and then connect it to 6 and connect this into pin 6. So this is basically jump ring between those two. Does that make sense? No. Nope. Tell me again. Alright. The, um, oh well, actually, that would be the white, the yellow, not the red. So let's do the red first. The red wire goes to pin 4. Okay. Which is the one? That one. Yep, just past the up exactly. So you're gonna get that red and hook it into that there. Solder that in, and we'll repeat the process. Like I was talking about, we'll get to that in a second. The grid, which is the yellow wire, will connect into pin six with the other end of that resistor and solder it in. Then the resistor will then be bent around and connect to pin five as well. I usually like to put pin five in. That should be enough, I think. Just has to go through the hole, basically. Bend it at an angle, put it through the hole. I'm gonna try and come at a slightly different angle because you're blocking that completely. Sorry guys, it's really hard to get any images inside of this super tight chassis, but you're getting hopefully the idea of what's going on. So, as I mentioned, this yellow wire will come over and connect into pin 5 and then jump her over with that resistor to pin 6. So, like I, like I was mentioning, I usually like to first put the resistor into both holes, solder it into the one. So there's your, we'll, we'll double check the resistance on that. I'll grab that. Let me grab my meter. That should be a 1.5K resistor. So we'll double check it. I haven't accidentally lost one, does something weird. Yep, 1.48k. Perfect. Okay. Set that aside. <laughs> All right. So it's between, if you look over here, you can see it's between pins five and six. So just connect it between pins five and six. And usually the best way yeah, is to just bend both of those. Actually, you need to bend it closer 
because look how close those pins are to each other. They're right there. So you have to jumper it to just um, kind of go into here and here. How far do I want it away from it? It just so that's not physically the, the you don't want the resistor itself physically touching the metal because it would transfer the heat of the soldering in the, in the resistor easier and therefore potentially damage the resistor. So. Mm. I kind of want to do those bends after because now you're going to get it in before. So solder in pin 5, but don't solder in pin 4 until you can get your yellow one in there. So there's a wire right there that I'm going to have to be very careful to not burn Yeah, even and if more. we need to, we can kind of pop it out temporarily. Like so. Oh, that's going to knock the nope. thing. I just have it away a little bit more like that. Okay. Alright, so my solder, which one am I soldering this in? Just the right side? The sixth one, you just solder that into the sixth one first, and then we'll get a wire into the fifth side, the fifth pin. No, sorry, I said that backwards. You want to solder it into the fifth pin, which is the lower one down here okay. first. If you need to also, you can we can splay these up a little bit away at that so they're not so close. Like so? Yep, so go ahead and do that left one. Alright. And on this too, one of the reasons we're doing this is that pin 6 is not used. So if she connects this into pin 5, which is the one that is the grid input, we have a 1.5k, what's called grid resistor, that is between those two, and, the, and that pin just acts as a jumper point, or like a connection. That's going to move like crazy when you touch it too, so... That's what I'm saying. I think if you lean back like that, it's probably fine. Or you can physically bend it after it's dried and soldered in there. Just kind of let it be once it stops and then, oops, I'll fill in the hole. I don't know. I don't Those know holes are big, I know. It's going a shit ton underneath the hole. That's good, I guess, but not really. There you go. Now it's sitting all weird on the thing. Well, it, you can bend the lead. It's like uh, it's cool. Yeah, once it's cool, you can kind of pull the resistor. But I think in a lot of ways, that's probably fine. The resistor itself is leaned against porcelain. There's nothing that it's going to ground out to. You'll just probably want to pull this other side in a little bit more. I'll show you what I mean with that. This guy. You can kind of go like that. And then it's a little bit further away. And then, now we just need to get this yellow wire. Run it down. However you want to kind of keep it hidden. If you want to, you might want to wrap it on the other side of that red one. I don't know, but wherever you think is the best way to run it down below there. Get it in place and we'll strip it and hook it, hook it into pin six. Need, is it coming? So you can just kind of pull it straight up and then down in, or up from should underneath almost. Over and down, I think? You could, yeah. And, and that sometimes is better. Is to, well, it's the only thing you want to avoid is these heaters. So I'd say no, actually. Because okay. you have to come by the heater. So I'd say come straight up through here um, and then from the bottom up. This is the main output transformer. It's probably one of the noisiest parts, I'm guessing. So now that I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking we might want to come from up and around that way. Like up here and around? Yep, just kind of. All right. Although the output jack will be here. All right. So Let's either, no, there's the heaters. That's the other thing you want to avoid. So you want to avoid the heaters. And we want to avoid that wire. So I would say come along the bottom like you're doing, but right about here, pull it up and around and in. Right. Okay. This is what's called lead dress and understanding where the noise sources are. Heaters will always be a noise source, noise source, so you want your 
your grid wiring as far away from heaters as possible. And also the main output connection is, is you know, an AC source of your signal and it could cause crosstalk and problems if it's too close to that main output wire. There you go, perfect. And it just needs to go in that hole. There you go. Did I make the wire too long? No, you can snip it afterwards. That doesn't matter. No, I mean over here. Um, Is that in the way? No, I think it's fine. I think it's okay. You can effectively, you'll be able to push this down more once it's soldered in place. You can kind of do what's called uh, what I would call qualify as cleanup after you're done. It's connected. Square things off, make them angles more sharp and clean. Some of the guys I've seen do amazingly clean layouts. All their angles are bent at these perfect angles. And I, uh, I think you have the patience for that. I don't. <laughs> Mine are all connected correctly and work. And they don't look the most beautiful layouts. But my layout style is getting better as I go. solder that in and then we can snip leads and stuff. Both of these, right? And I would say this is that, that sheet. What's that? Is that sheathing in the way? No. Not that I can tell. I'll pull it like this and you can solder it. Okay. The sheathing will melt a little bit. Oh, you know, this is the resistor doesn't have a good physical connection there. Maybe I'll fix that. I'll just hold this for you, hold it here. It's better. It's funky now. <laughs> what happened? I was trying to tighten it because it was loose and wobbling. It wasn't connecting with the actual tab. Alright. That's more important than it looking nice. Can't we do both? You can. <laughs> Alright. 